Meet the B-25, the Billy Mitchell. She's built for low-level, torpedo, and long-range-level bombing. From now on, she's your ship. You'll want to know her like the back of your hand. So grab a shoot pack and we'll try her out. A good pilot begins every flight with a thorough visual inspection. We'll do the same. Make sure your nose gear locking pin is engaged with cap on. Otherwise, a shimmy will develop when you taxi. Check your shock struts for pressure and your tires for proper inflation, according to your load. Are your wheel chocks in place? The control surfaces, the body of the airplane, the nacelles, and the wing. Examine them all for evidence of gasoline or oil leakage. Never enter your plane without checking the front fuel cell, rear fuel cell, an auxiliary fuel cell on each wing. Make sure you have at least 21 gallons of oil in each oil reservoir. Replace the gasoline filler cap with care, making sure the handle folds to the rear to prevent slipstream from working the cap loose during flight. All these and many other items should have been checked for you, but play safe. Look for trouble yourself. As you enter the hatch, check the air bottle for your emergency brakes. It must be charged to between 550 and 600 pounds pressure. See that all three escape hatches are unlocked so that in an emergency someone can get to you from outside. Always fasten your safety belt before you leave the line. Unlock the flying controls and adjust the pilot seat for comfort. Make sure the locking lever is secured in the down position. Put on your throat microphone and headset. Check the ignition switches off and set your parking brakes. If your plane has been inactive for more than 15 minutes, have your props pulled through 10 or 12 blades before you start the engines. This is highly important. Oil may have drained into the lower cylinders. Next, connect the external battery supply, if one is available, so you won't run down the airplane's batteries. Now start a methodical tour of your instruments. First, turn on the fuel emergency shutoff valves. Then the generator and active inverter switches. Open cowl flaps. Close oil shutters. Move mixture control into full rich position. Open your throttles one half inch to give about a thousand RPM and lock the automatic pilot off. Turn on battery disconnect switches. Next, switch on your ignition and fuel booster pumps. A good pilot always starts his right engine first. Energize the starter, then prime five to seven shots at one second each if the engine is cold, or one to three shots if the engine is hot. Now, after you've warned the ground crew and made sure someone is standing by with a fire extinguisher, mesh the starter until the engine starts. However, don't hold the starter engaged for long periods. You'll burn out your booster coils. Oil pressure should rise to 40 pounds within 30 seconds after the engine takes hold. If it doesn't, cut the engine and investigate. If it does, start your left engine the same way you did your right. There's an alternate method of starting, which many pilots prefer. You can engage the starter and prime as necessary while the engine is turning over. Idle and warm up your engines at 1,000 to 1,200 RPM. They are not warmed up to a safe point for takeoff until cylinder head temperature registers 150 degrees and oil temperature 40 degrees, at which time the oil cooler shutters may be opened. Next, both pilot and co-pilot go through the checklist, item by item. Nose gear locking pin, checked, okay. Automatic pilot, locked off. Now check your flying controls for free and proper movement and make sure the controls respond. The co-pilot looks out to watch the movement of rudders, elevators, and ailerons. The checklist continues. De-icer control, off. Pilot hatch, closed and locked. Lower turret, retracted. All hatches closed. It's time now to check your fuel levels. Suction, 3.75 to 4.25. General hydraulic pressure, 800 to 1,100 pounds. 
Brake pressure, 1,000 to 1,200 pounds. Fuel booster pumps, both on. Fuel pressure, 6 to 7 pounds. Now you're ready to trim your tabs. Trim elevators from zero to one quarter degree tail heavy, depending on the center of gravity position. Ailerons zero and rudder zero. Propeller, full increase RPM. Check mixture at full rich position and lock snug. Lock your supercharger in low. Open the oil cooler shutters. Carburetor air, normal, unless icing conditions prevail. Wing flaps come down 15 degrees for normal takeoff. Control neutral. Cowl flaps open. Controls neutral. Emergency brake control, safety. Emergency hydraulic selector valve, normal. Fuel emergency shutoff valves, on. Set your cockpit and compartment heaters off. They're the combustible type, unsafe to use during takeoff. See that your static pressure selector handle is set at normal and your gyro instruments uncaged. While you're on the ground, never release the landing gear safety lock or throw the safety latch. If you do, then the landing gear lever might accidentally be lifted and a B-25 is not designed for digging tunnels. Someone's carelessness in securing the safety lock and latch in the plane made this ridiculous accident possible. Propellers cost money. You can't throw them away like matches. Another word of caution. Before running up your engines on the line, always look behind you to make sure that your prop last won't endanger persons or property. Your next step is to check the propeller controls at about 2100 RPM. Move controls to full decrease and note decrease in RPM. Then shift controls to full increase and RPM should return to original setting. Check magnetos at 25 inches of manifold pressure and 1,800 to 2,000 RPM. A drop of 75 RPM on one magneto is nothing to worry about. If there's a greater drop, or if undue engine vibration develops, investigate at once. If your magnetos check OK, you're about ready to go. Now a final check of cylinder head temperature, oil temperature, and oil pressure. And you're ready to contact the control tower for permission to taxi. When you get it, have your chocks removed. Release your parking brakes. And you're on your way. You don't try to turn before your ship gets moving. To do so would put dangerous side stress on the nose wheel. You remember to use your brakes cautiously until you're familiar with their action. Brake pedal forces are light. They don't build up in proportion to pedal travel. So you steer with the throttles as much as you can, thus saving your brakes from excessive heat and wear. An engine speed of 1,000 to 1,200 RPM is ample for taxiing. Practice will give you smoothness on turns, but never try to pivot on one wheel. The minimum radius of turn for the inside wheel should be at least 10 feet. Before you roll onto the runway, Run your engines up to takeoff power once more. And again, hold them there a second to see if you've really got full power available. Now contact the control tower for permission to take off. Adjust the throttle locks carefully so your throttles won't creep. Don't forget to steer with those throttles for the early part of your run till you have speed enough to give rudder control. And remember the relation of gross weight to flying speed. If you're carrying a light to moderate load, the pull-off can be made at an indicated airspeed of 100 to 105 miles per hour. But if you have a medium heavy or heavy load, your pull-off speed should be between 115 and 120 miles per hour. So much for normal flight. But let's see what the B-25 will do under simulated emergency conditions. For example, here we have an obstacle clearance takeoff from a short field. On a takeoff of this kind, you first taxi to the end of the runway as far as possible and lower your flaps to 30 degrees.
Your indicated airspeed varies from 95 miles per hour with a very light weight of 23,000 pounds up to 120 miles per hour with a heavy gross weight of 36,000 pounds. Corresponding speeds for the climb are 106 miles per hour for the light weight and 136 miles per hour for the heavy weight. Hold the plane with your brakes and open the throttles to take off power. When you're sure you have it, release your brakes quickly and you shoot away like a rocket. You're loaded right now to about 26,000 pounds gross weight. So keep an eye on that speed indicator, and when it reaches 102 miles per hour, pull firmly back on the stick and climb your plane at about 115 miles per hour. Remember, this is not the airspeed for the best rate of climb. It's correct for the best angle of climb over an obstacle. When your plane is safely airborne, but only after a definite signal from the pilot, the co-pilot retracts the landing gear. Your cow flaps may be closed if cylinder head temperatures can be held within normal range. Before beginning to climb, it's smart to keep your nose down until a safe single engine flying speed of about 140 miles per hour is reached. Meanwhile, the pilot reduces manifold pressure to 38 inches and the co-pilot reduces RPM to 2400. As you rise above 800 feet, retract your wing flaps. Bring them up gradually. That way you won't settle or lose altitude. Then return flap controls to neutral. While you're climbing, the co-pilot checks all engine instruments to see that indications are normal. If your mission is one requiring endurance, you have a choice of three cruising conditions. Maximum cruise, using 29 and a half to 31 and a half inches of manifold pressure at 2100 RPM in low blower and full rich up to 13,000 feet. Desired cruise, using 27 inches of manifold pressure at 2000 RPM in low blower and full rich up to 16,000 feet or long-range crews using 26.5 to 27.5 inches of manifold pressure at 1550 RPM in low blower and cruising lean up to 13,000 feet. However, if speed is essential at higher altitudes than 11,000 feet, you'll have to shift into high blower. Before this shift is made, the pilot retards the throttles to 25 inches of manifold pressure and the co-pilot reduces RPM to 1700. Shift blower controls quickly to save unnecessary wear on the clutches. With high ratio blower in operation, you can pull up to 39 inches of manifold pressure at an engine speed of 2400 RPM with mixture control in full rich. On long flights, you can avoid unnecessary fatigue by using the automatic pilot. Trim your plane carefully to hold a straight and level course with hands off. Follow usual procedure in uncaging and adjusting the directional gyro, bank and climb gyro, and trim knobs. Then slowly move the automatic pilot to on position. You can feel it taking hold. Now readjust as needed to hold the ship on course. So as we're at a safe altitude, we might as well investigate the stalling characteristics of the B-25. At normal gross weight, the clean wing and gear retracted, the Mitchell stalls at about 101 miles per hour, indicated. But with wheels and flaps down, as seen here, she stalls at close to 80 miles per hour. You develop a slight buffeting, and there she goes. To recover from the stall, depress your nose and increase power until you gain normal flying speed once more. Naturally, a plane with a heavy load like this one will lose several hundred feet of altitude before she recovers. When it comes to dive bombing, you can count on your Mitchell to the last notch. With a gross weight of 30,000 pounds or less, 
Your maximum permissible diving speed will be 340 miles per hour indicated. Don't exceed this for any loading. And keep your eyes open when you try diving in rough air. The B-25 pulls out nicely, but keep your control forces at a minimum so you can make a smooth, easy recovery without putting too much stress on the ship. If an engine cuts out on you, don't forget your minimum speed for control. Using only one engine at rated power, it's 140 miles per hour into it. At less, if you apply full power to the good engine, the ship will begin to yaw. Instead, put the nose down to maintain required flying speed and at your rudder trim tab to balance the loss of engine thrust. The tab has ample power for this purpose. Meanwhile, feather the prop on the dead engine to prevent windmilling and be sure to close the power flaps so cooling is gradual. Fly with your dead engine high and don't try any violent maneuvers. Keep a weather eye on the cylinder head temperature of your good engine and if you need to, Adjust the cowl flaps to keep within maximum permissible limits. Don't be afraid to tackle a single engine landing if it's necessary. Just keep cool and use your head. It's smart to make a high approach, reducing power all the way, rather than to start an approach from a distance and drag in over the treetops. Don't fail to go through that checklist with great care now. When your airspeed has fallen below 170 miles per hour, indicated, on approach, Put down your landing gear. Hold your airspeed above 140 miles per hour. Govern your good engine at 2400 RPM constant. So if you can't land this time, you'll be sure to have power enough to go around. Remember that all planes lose efficiency under landing conditions. This is especially true if you're flying on one engine. Don't use full flaps until you're positive you can land this time. As you make your final approach, Keep re-trimming so you won't have to worry about a lot of changes at the last minute. If you keep your speed above 140 miles per hour, you can always pull up your landing gear and go around. When you know the landing's in the bag, close your throttles, brake your glide, and set her down. Now let's cover a normal landing, which also takes its share of intelligence and skill. You follow your landing checklist item by item. Automatic pilot, off. De-icer control, off. Lower gun turret and radio trailing antenna, retracted. Fuel levels for both engines, checked. General hydraulic pressure, 800 to 1,100 pounds. Brake pressure, 1,000 to 1,200 pounds. Fuel booster pumps, on. Prop, Steady at 2100 RPM. Mixture full rich. Supercharger locked in low. Oil cooler shutters open. Cowl flaps closed and controls neutral. Landing gear extended, but not until airspeed drops below 170. Now check your landing gear indicator and warning horn and fasten landing gear safety latch. Make your approach at about 130 miles per hour with full flaps. Hold her dead on 130 till you reach your flare-off point, then make ground contact close to 100 miles per hour indicated. Land with the tail quite low and hold your nose wheel off the runway until you slow down. It isn't built to take heavy loads at high speed. Besides, with the tail low, your plane slows more rapidly, and so you shorten your landing run. Be easy with those brakes till you know their action. After landing, move your props to full increase. Turn your fuel booster pumps off. Your cowl flaps open. Wing flaps up. Controls neutral. Gyro instruments caged. As you return to the line, taxi at 1,000 to 1,200 RPM. And on turns... Let your inside wheel follow a 10-foot radius. Always park with your nose wheel straight and follow prescribed routine for stopping your engine. Idle the engines at 1,000 RPM until cylinder head temperatures drop below 190 degrees. Then run them at 1,500 to 1,600 RPM for five seconds and move mixture control to idle cutoff. At the same time, open your throttles.
After the engines stop, lock your flying controls, replace locks on hydraulic controls, and turn all switches off. So there's your Mitchell. Intelligent, disciplined pilot technique will make these babies do everything but talk. Speed, endurance, responsiveness, everything it takes for long, hard missions. And plenty of protective armament besides. Yep, there she goes. Treat her right, gentlemen. And you'll see why the experts call her the best medium bomber in the world.